Hey everybody, this is Stormworks, and that is a submarine. I made a video about building submarines, but I used kind of a crappy submarine to show it off, so I figured I'd make a better submarine and I'd show you in more detail some more advanced features you can use and uh, some basics to get you started. So the number one thing that you're going to need to do when you're building your submarine is make sure that your weight distribution is correct and that you don't have much buoyancy. Your engines should be directly behind your center of mass, and the only thing above the surface of the water should be the entry hatch. And if the entry hatch gets swamped by a wave, it doesn't really matter, because if you get water in the ship, you need to have bilges in there anyway, they'll take care of it. So you don't have to be too exact, as long as, you know, it looks more or less like this, just below the surface of the water, with the engines directly below the center of mass. Now if we go inside, we're going to see that this is a very open plan submarine, which is not generally what I recommend, but I wanted this to be a tutorial submarine that you could walk around in. So it's got tall halls and lots and lots of interior air, which makes it very floaty. And floaty isn't a great match if you're trying to sink to the bottom of the ocean. So let's talk about how to make it heavier. Well, the number one thing to do would be to not put quite so much airspace in. But if you like airspace like I do, then you can add weights. Obviously, there are some weights here, but that's actually not the number one way I would recommend. What I did is I put in cavities, both on the top and on the bottom, and then I'm using water spawners to spawn those full of water, and that's a very, very nice weight. In addition to being a nice balanced weight, it's something which cushions any damage that hits the ship. If we rip open the outer hull, then no water is going to get in because the outer hull was already full of water. What are we going to do? Exchange one kind of water for another? It doesn't really matter. So this is a much more durable design than the previous designs, and this entire lower portion uh, will take quite a beating before it actually starts to affect the performance of the ship, although you'll lose your light pretty quick. <laughs> um, once you've done that sort of thing to balance out your interior air, then you can use weights to just fine-tune the pitch of your ship, which is what I've done. Almost all the weights are in the front because uh, we got the water pack back here, which is weighing the back down. This really seems to work great for creating this kind of balanced ship. Uh, now, I've tried filling these pockets with more useful things like fuel, but as you start to pump fuel out of them, the fuel starts to slosh around, which really disrupts how the ship runs. Uh, and so I don't recommend that. I recommend keeping your fuel in tanks, um, even though it does take up extra space, um, and just using water for ballast. If you come up with a better design, of course, let me know. So this has a couple of large rotors to power it along, four of them to be exact. And if we take a look, those are not always going to be fueled by batteries. We do have batteries right here, but those batteries don't last very long. And this is why a lot of beginners have submarines that uh, only go maybe a kilometer and then run out. And they're like, oh, I hate submarines now. Instead, what we've got is diesel. And diesel is what you're going to need to take you across the map. It also helps to recharge your batteries. There's battery chargers on the far side of the diesel. So you can really uh, extend your, um, your performance quite dramatically by using diesel. Now, obviously, diesel requires air. So once you start to dive, your diesel will usually turn off, and you'll need to switch over to batteries. But that's not a big deal, right? You can deal with that. There are also tricks you can use to make that uh, a lot more interesting. So let's go ahead and talk in more detail about how I am setting this all up. These green intakes are for air coming into the diesel tanks, and the blue ones are exhaust for, you know, exhaust out of the tanks. But if we take a look down, those all flow into these green and pink tanks. They don't go straight into the engine. Now, the reason for that is simply because we're going to be diving, and I want to store some of that stuff for when we're underwater, so I can keep using my diesel when we're underwater. This works really amazingly well, but it does make the, uh, it does make the ship a little heavy, so we're running kind of slow. Uh, if I didn't have any storage for air or exhaust, then we could probably be hitting 20. Right now, I think we're at 10. It's not a big deal. So this is a slow, long-term ship, but it's able to operate for you know five or ten minutes at the bottom of the ocean on diesel, which is pretty impressive, at least to me. Now the way that these intakes work is that there are filters that only allow air through. 
Otherwise, you're going to get swamped with water whenever you dive, and that's much, much worse than simply turning your diesel off, because then when you surface again, your diesel will never turn back on. But here's the thing. We might not want to take the water, but we're going to. It's going to come in the top. And so if we have a filter that prevents the water from going through, water's just going to buck up against the filter, and you're not going to be able to do anything. Your water is just going to be stuck there forever, and you won't be able to get any more air. So what we've actually got here is outputs. These outports will dump any water that happens to get stuck against the filter, but keep in mind that you don't want any distance in pipe between the filter and the exhaust port, because that's distance where you can get random pockets of air or water, and it doesn't work very well. So I find that this works great, and I really like this setup. Uh, let's go ahead and turn so that we don't ram into that thing. So... When we take a look at these tanks, you can see there's a lot of stuff going on. These are the pumps drawing in from above, but what's with all of these arrows? Well, if you've ever experimented with putting multiple pumps in a row onto your ship or onto a line, you might have noticed that they don't really work. The more pumps you have, you don't pump any more, uh, any more fluid. It just it, it maxes out at a certain amount. If you put in 18 pumps all in a row, it's the same speed as one pump. So what I've done is I've got each of these pumps pumping across green intake tanks, and that will allow me to fill these tanks very, very rapidly. However, without these indicators, these one-way passes, that doesn't actually work because you get backflow across all of these channels, and it ends up being exactly the same efficiency as a single pump pumping into all of these, which is terrible, right? But the good news is if you put an indicator after every T-junction, then the flow all goes in the same direction, and I call it laminar flow. And that means that we get an incredible amount of air super, super fast. Uh, each of these tanks fills up in about a minute, like just the whole thing completely full in one minute, which is much, much better than we had with the previous ship. And you can see I've done the same thing with the exhaust going in the other direction. The exhaust gets pumped out, and again, it's all laminar flow. The fuel, also laminar flow. Now, the reason I did that was pretty simple. I am pulling in from two tanks, one, uh, you know, sets on each side here. And that means that as we get to this T-junction, we get a lot of backwash as it's trying to determine whether or not the flow is coming around this way and then up this way. By putting in these two arrows, I've reduced the number of times that the engine flickers red. If you've ever looked at an engine and see it gone like fuel 100, fuel 60, fuel 100, fuel 60, that's usually because you've got a T-junction in your fuel line and you need to put these in to make sure that it understands that it's not pushing from one fuel tank to another fuel tank, it's pulling from all of the fuel tanks. Works pretty well, works pretty easily. This is all a very basic piping setup. It just draws from the tanks that we've got and pushes to the tanks that we've got. You can see how there's nothing complicated about that at all. One thing worth noting is that you can tell whether or not you're above or below the surface of the water using these um, uh, flow meters. So in this case, I've got it set up so that you can see the air pressure here is 57. When we're underwater, that goes down into the negative range. And it's the same with this guy over here, uh, except for in the opposite. When we're underwater, it goes into the positive range. So that way you can tell whether or not you are you know, in surface mode or not. We are in surface mode. If we start to dive, we won't be in surface mode anymore, but we'll still have plenty of air. Now, as usual, you don't want to have much in the way of diving. You don't need to have a heavy touch here. Um, this is not a ship that should go vertical. You know, 15 degrees is already a little sharp. So, you know, just take it nice and slow. And you can see that we're no longer in surface mode because we are not at the surface, but we're still burning air and we're still pumping all of that beautiful exhaust. And that's a great way to do it. Uh, we can pump exhaust down to 70 meters, at which point it'll stop pumping and we will be storing it in tanks. Uh, and that's fine. It all works out. We've just passed 70 meters. You can see this little red LED turned on to tell me, um, as if I couldn't see it. And this ship can continue to operate at this depth for an astonishing length of time. Uh, it can go as deep as you want it to. So because of that, uh, this is an excellent ship for long-term you know, exploration missions to the bottom of the ocean. And I did it specifically to show you the kinds of longevity you can get out of your submarines. Because um, I looked at a couple of submarines from the workshop, and they were all about, you know, lasting 
a minute and a half using batteries. And I was like, nah, you can do better than that. Whoa, 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 whoa. See, you can do those sharp climbs and dives. Just be careful not to uh, accidentally slam into something. <laughs> So as for the rest of the ship, I've got a lot of logic circuits built into this, and I'm going to go ahead and take you on a tour of those. Uh, but I just wanted to give you an idea of just how long we can continue to run on diesel here at the bottom of the ocean. We're still running on diesel. Our stored exhaust is about half full. Um, once the exhaust fills up, our diesel will continue to operate uh, for a surprising amount of time past that, but the efficiency will start to fall off. Um, however, we can just go back up to 70 meters and get the, 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 uh, the diesel to start uh, pumping again and it'll work. The exhaust to start pumping again. It'll work fine. If we look here, we can see how much distance we've got below us. That's just using a distance meter on the nose of the ship. It would be very handy if you were unable to see it in third person like this. Uh, but since we can see it in third person, it's not a big deal. Oh, cute. Look at that. Let's go ahead and pull to a stop here. Now, I think we're going to end up popping back to the surface. I don't think we're... Uh, no, it should work. So let's go ahead and go out and take a look. Poof! We're in creative mode, but there's no damage from, from diving, so I can take a look at stuff like this and uh, just take a, take a quick little peek. And you can see that this is not an actual asset that was intended to be explored. Um, there's all sorts of glitching. But we've discovered a cool little secret. Ain't that nice? In case you're wondering where that is, it's here. <laughs> Neat. Now let's go back aboard the ship and continue our journey. We are at very, very close to neutral buoyancy. Um, just need a little bit more. What is up there? What? What's going on here? Uh, I think I was stuck in the geometry there and it got confused. I sure hope this ship doesn't explode due to the geometry. So this is a distance meter, and basically as I get close, it detects me and it opens the hatch for five seconds. No problems, right? Now we're taking on a lot of water, but uh, we are bilging it out. Now the problem with this is that we're actually so low in our... Um, uh, it, it, we can't actually bilge the water out. It's, uh, it's not actually going to work because we can't pump water. As far as I know, you can't pump anything out of the ship at these depths. We are... 150 meters down. Now, start the engines back up. We're using diesel still. <laughs> so, when it comes to design philosophies, there are a lot, but it's really important when you are doing submarines to make sure that you're not creating too much drag and you're not creating too much buoyancy. Uh, this is a very buoyant ship, so I went to a lot of efforts to bring the buoyancy down, and in exchange, that means it's a very slow ship. If I had been a little tighter, I could have made a faster ship, um, and I wouldn't have needed so much weight to bring it down. So that's really the key. All of the extra add-ons that I try and talk about, they are just extras. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful to you. I don't think I've missed anything important. These are just bilge pumps that move it steadily backwards. Uh, I've got some air pressure gauges, how much we've actually got in terms of air. Um, you know, just random things here and there. So the bilge pumps are working now and will be clear of water in you know, the near future. But uh, that is the basic idea behind building yourself a submarine. This submarine is called the GAR, and I'll put it up on the workshop for you, so you can take a look at it if you please. Uh, and it's something where you can easily walk around and see how everything is set up, especially the laminar flow trick. That trick is great. It'll really increase your ability to pump really, really fast, which is critical if you're planning on having um, a submarine that's fun to pilot.